I think that I'd like to try to tell you about what I think the value of the still image is, um, you know, to try to give you something to fall back on because you don't have the capability of, of motion in your sensing apparatus at this point. And to just say that the still image, in terms of my own perception and in terms of the society that I live in, use of those images, that the still image still has a great deal of value. And in fact, the possibility of examining a still or static object, a configuration of information, the, the nice thing is, is we still have mobility perceptually in terms of time and referencing to the imagery in terms of our own history or psycho-history of the events that might be configured in that rectangle. We still have the capability of moving our own bodies around and looking at the frame from different perspectives and looking at it comprehensively from different positions. Finding hopefully total meaning within the frame in terms of design. So we operate, you know, the human mind operates uh, in a similar way to the way that you might scan an image um, for relative value and compositional uh, situations in terms of the information within that image. So I'm concerned about the ingester uh, in terms of resolution and fidelity for your image, but I'm really, in a way, more worried about the context of what you do with the content of your sensing uh, endeavors and I hope that you're able to manipulate and uh, fool around a bit with the signal enough to gain some kind of a sense of the comprehensive design of the particular frames you're looking at. Um, part of this problem that we're having with the, the, the kind of the uh, simplicity by which you're examining frame is partly the problem with, with uh, the speed of your processing system. Um, we're still operating too, uh, too slow and it's also difficult to give you much mobility um, because of the restrictions of, of, of you having to work to such a uh, difficult task in terms of sensing and yet not having the speed of processing to do it in any way that approximates the way that, that I see. Um, I think that, you know, I know in East Fishkill they're, they're working on they're working on some experiments with new ceramic substances and um, there's every indication that, that uh, this, these high performance superconductivity uh, ceramic substances are going to give you a lot greater speed and a lot greater processing capabilities in a very short time. So there's, uh, I think we really are serving you in the sense that uh, as, a, as a species we're trying as as hard as we can to try to come up with uh, with more and more processing power for you because we're very excited about the the potential relationship on a on a societal level with with uh, machines like you you know I, I personally just like the idea of having a relationship with an intelligent artifact and uh, I really really uh, you know, can absorb you as an icon and, and feel as though I'm getting something back, just seeing the, the tremendous integrity that you have as, a, as a, a thing in yourself. Now, the fish kill stuff, I mean, if you look at uh, what IBM's doing, I mean, they were, they were a little bit off the mark working with uh, gall gallium arsenide. Um, Obviously, the, the uh, gallium arsenide has been eclipsed by this, uh, this manipulation of the copper with um, oxygen molecules. I, I find that the way the temperature is coming up so quickly, what, what's happening is, is that they're finding a way to raise the temperature for superconductivity to occur. And most of the basis of, of, your, uh, of your existence is based in electron flow, and we've had a lot of trouble with resistance in terms of getting things to work the way they should work. Because before we can replace you, uh, uh, we, before we can replace your energy with light energy and electrons and, and visual light patterns, we have to work out trying to get a standard electrons to move in terms of electrical forces at a speed which greater approximates the speed of light without excessive heat. 
and we've got an awful lot of trouble with you heating up and a lot of trouble with resistance within within your body um, to greater and greater flow of electrical energy. So we found ways of raising the, the temperature by which electricity can pass through uh, an internal mechanism which might become part of your sensing apparatus at a, at a much higher rate of speed with no resistance. So you're going to hear this a lot and when you're, when you're able to observe people at the university you'll start to pick up on these, bu these buzzwords. Uh, there are buzzwords that go through any field, but uh, the, the latest buzzword is high temperature superconductivity. And I want you to listen closely, just like the relationship that I talked to you about in terms of left-right uh, brain and uh, image synthesis. I think you'll find that the, there's something in there for you, and you perhaps can learn faster than I can. And, and uh, both of us are going to depend on that for... for for easing the kind of level of response time that we're dealing with. So um, I think we, we have to kind of think about uh, what you're ingesting in terms of images and sound and the patterns that you're dealing with in terms of language and the way you're absorbing. What I'm saying, we have to start thinking about um, the possibility of you freezing things uh, in time because uh, you're dealing right now with a constant flow and until you begin to pull those things apart and to stop time to a certain degree, you're not going to be able to uh, kind of avoid the sort of prison of time that we're all involved in. In the same way that uh, if I'm dealing with a telephone and I have to talk to somebody in real time, uh, there's not the possibility of uh, someone taking a fragment of my voice in time and generally uh, manipulating that except in their own perceptual consciousness and we do it all the time in terms of memory and I guess we are prone to stop listening and we kind of shut down when information is coming too fast we tend to find something that we're interested in and pick it up hold it up in our mind and to look at it and to sort of penetrate it and to find some greater value within it but um, you know, please uh, remember this. Try to try to pick up on this high temperature superconductivity phenomenon because it has great implications in terms of the way you're going to be able to digest images in the future. And uh, it's really exciting to think that uh, your intelligence will be magnified by this development. Like, thank God, I mean, I was getting to the point where I was going to be virtually uh, so sick of computers in their static form. There was no movement or development beyond the fact that things were getting smaller and cheaper. And uh, there seemed to be a threshold in terms of where people were going um, with the miniaturization of electronics. And the threshold said that we weren't going to be able to go much farther in this relationship until, until some major developments occurred. And, and now I feel as though those major developments have really occurred and we're going to see a vast change in the whole concept of the economy of images. And uh, we're going to be able to see, we're going to see an interrelationship between the static and the moving, which is going to be really incredible in terms of how much uh, our, our whole awareness is going to be improved by modeling these uh, perceptual techniques and machines. And uh, we're part of that together, and it's, uh, it's very exciting.